remember once when I was living in Rome as rector of the seminary, we got to go hear the Holy Father every week, you know, for his Angelus message. Remember one time our Holy Father Emeritus said these words in the square, which kind of struck me. He said, the first task of a priest is to be a believer and to become one ever new and ever more. He continued, the most lofty and important thing a priest can do for his people is first be what he is, a believer. When people sense that one is there who believes, who lives with God and from God, hope becomes a reality for them as well. He concluded, all human believing is a believing with. Indeed, brothers and sisters in Christ, the priest as father offers us the someone to believe with. In the end, the priest is the man who despite all of his failings, his defects, and even his sins, with certainty says to Jesus, just like St. Peter, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. This is what matters to all of us because it is an answer of someone whom we can believe with. So as your bishop this evening, I certainly want you to know without a doubt, I believe. But I also happily entrust to you another believer, another priest as your pastor, Father Hank Hilton. When Father Hilton stands at your graveside when you bury your beloved, he believes that death is not the end. When he baptizes your baby, he believes that they are saved and united to God himself. When he absolves you of your sins in confession, he believes that your sins are absolutely forgiven forever. When he leads you in the most sacred of prayers, celebrating the holy sacrifice of the Mass, he believes that Christ's presence is made real, body, soul, and divinity, for us to eat and be nourished by. He believes. When he anoints you when you are sick and suffering, he believes that your suffering is not pointless. When he confirms you with the sacred chrism at the Easter Vigil, he believes that the Holy Spirit enters you in a new way. When he witnesses your wedding vows, he believes that you are truly won by God's grace until death. The gift of the priesthood is to give to every single member of the human family somebody to believe with them even when it might seem that no one else is believing, that things are going the opposite direction. He believes with you. The priesthood says this, no one is left to believe alone. No one, no one left alone to recognize Jesus as the Christ, the Son of the living God. Even when it might not seem like it, when indifference seems to be rolling over us, or even against us. Remember, God has chosen someone for you. Someone for you to believe with. Don't mistakenly believe in him, though. Believe with him, in Jesus Christ. Jesus, who is our Savior. Our Lord is calling more men to be priests because humanity is so in need of someone to believe with. Pray for more priests and encourage men you know who would make good priests to open their hearts to the possibility of a call from him to share with God 
and his son's priesthood. We need priests, both our church and our entire world. Yes, the Lord has appointed you, Father Hank, as Ezekiel reminded us today in our, gospel, in our first reading. You are to be a, wor- a watchman for the flock. And as St. Paul told us, you are to teach us to owe nothing to anyone except love. Indeed, our gospel today reminds us of our responsibility of helping one another to pursue a life of holiness and to never, never stop seeking the good of one another. Even after we go through that long process of trying to reconcile someone that our gospel gives us tonight, approaching the person, going with someone else, and then going to the church, St. Matthew says, even after you've done all that, then treat him like a tax collector. St. Matthew, of course, was a tax collector. And he knew that God, through Jesus, loved him. He knew when Jesus looked at him that he loved him. That's what we're to do with one another. Even after we've reached our our wit's end trying to reconcile one another, look at each other like tax collectors in God's eyes. Father, may your actions always show that you believe. And may you teach this community of St. Joseph's, this lovely parish, that they always have someone to believe with, not necessarily someone to believe in, (laughs) but someone to believe with. So we thank you. We thank you for taking on that responsibility and awesome privilege this evening. The first task of a priest is to be a believer and to become one ever new and ever more, as our Holy Father said. I believe with my whole heart, and I know that your new pastor believes the same, and he will lead you more deeply in believing in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. May our reception of Jesus in the Eucharist this evening increase our faith, each one of us, along with your good pastors. And God bless you all. My dear friends, because I'm aware of your pastoral needs and I am confident in Father Hilton's qualifications for the office of pastor, I now present him to you as your new pastor and I ask those who are called to please stand. Will the members of the parish staff please stand? Father Hilton, my brother, these members of the clergy and parish staff will assist you in the pastoral care of the people of this parish. Share this ministry in a spirit of mutual trust, common prayer, and genuine concern. My friend, as I shepherd this community, I am grateful for your assistance and your collaboration in caring for the spiritual and temporal needs. Will the members of the Parish Council and Finance Committee please rise? Father, this is the large Pastoral Council and Finance Committee of this parish. (laughs) It is the voice of your people and will assist you and counsel you as you minister to this parish of St. Joseph's. Always be attentive to the needs that they express. I pledge to seek your counsel regarding the pastoral and the temporal affairs of our parish community. Will the parish trustees please rise? Father, these are the civil trustees of St. Joseph's Parish. 
As the lay officers of the parish corporation, they will share with you the responsibility for the corp parish's corporate and legal affairs. I very much appreciate your sharing in this responsibility and pledge to work closely with you in handling the legal affairs of the parish. And remember, my brother, Father Hank, always be a loving father, a gentle shepherd, and a wise teacher of your people, so that you may lead them to Christ, who will strengthen all that you do. And as a teacher of the faith, I ask you now to lead your people in the profession of faith. Please stand for the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With firm faith, I also believe everything contained in God's word, written or handed down in tradition, and proposed by the church, whether in solemn judgment or in ordinary and universal magisterium, as divinely revealed and calling for faith. I also firmly accept and hold each and everything that is proposed by the church definitively regarding teach, teachings on faith and morals. Moreover, I adhere with religious submission of will and intellect to the teachings which either the Roman Pontiff or the College of Bishops enunciate when they exercise the authentic magisterium, even if they proclaim those teachings in an act that is not definitive. So thank you and congratulations, huh? Thank you. Let us now pray for the church and its leaders, especially our new pastor, and, and for his mission and for the needs of all people.